My name is Michelle, and what brought us to Dr. Farrell's office is uh, our son, and it was a sports injury. And we've been with Dr. Farrell for two years, two surgeries, and multiple injuries, accidents, things like that. First and foremost, most importantly, uh, he cares about his patients. And it's not where they say they care about their patient and then you get into a surgical procedure and you can't find your doctor. He truly cares about his patients and he's, he's there when you need him the most. He suffered a, a fairly significant injury to his knee uh, playing football. He uh, dislocated his kneecap, uh, his patella, and he sprained his medial collateral ligament or his MCL. So let's go over the anatomy of the knee just for a second so you understand what I'm referencing. So there's, there's basically uh, four bones uh, that make up the knee joint. There's the femur, which is the thigh bone. The tibia is the shin bone. This bone on the outside is called the fibula. And then you have your, your patella, which is the kneecap. And so uh, if we're looking at the front of the knee, it's this ligament on the inside that's called the MCL, the medial collateral ligament. But he also dislocated his, his patella, his kneecap. Um, and so if you look at the front of someone's thigh, uh, there's uh, four muscles in the front of the thigh called the quadricep muscles. They each have a name. And that forms the quadricep tendon, which s surrounds or envelops the patella. And then you have the patella tendon, or I guess technically patella ligament, because it goes from a bone to a bone, but we call it the patella tendon, uh, attaches to this bony prominence here on the tibia, and that's called the tibial tubercle. Uh, and so sometimes uh, patients are born with anatomy that predisposes them to instability of the patella or a, a dislocating kneecap. Um, if you look further or closer, at the femur, you can see this groove in the end of the femur, that's called the trochlea. And sometimes patients are born with very shallow trochleas, so you can see a nice groove here. Sometimes patients are born with flat trochleas, and he had that, and that was one issue. And then the other issue is, I, I mentioned this bony prominence on your shin, the tibial tubercle, you can feel that on the front of your knee, below your knee. Sometimes we're born with this tubercle uh, and it's lateralized or it's located towards the outside part of the knee. And what that does is, if you think about the quadricep muscles here attaching to the patella, if this attachment point is way over here, the vector pulls the patella towards the outside and it can dislocate. It can come off out of the groove of the trochlea. And so he... <clears throat> When he dislocated his kneecap, uh, he tore a ligament, which goes from the femur, the thigh bone, over to the patella. That's called the medial, because it's on the inside, medial patella femoral ligament. He tore that, uh, and he also injured some of the cartilage underneath. Uh, but once you tear that ligament and you have that uh, malalignment uh, with this bony prominence, the tubercle being located over here, you really are... Uh, predisposed to going uh, on to develop chronic, what we call chronic patella instability, which is um, uh, numerous repeated dislocations of his kneecap. Um, after his initial injury, when he sprained his MCL and dislocated his, his patella, we, we treated him non-operatively. We rehabbed him for several months. He was in a brace, uh, and we, we did everything we could to treat him non-operatively, but unfortunately, he went on to develop chronic patella instability with the kneecap dislocating. And uh, he had maximized non-operative management and he was already in a brace and really, uh, aside from surgery, there weren't any other options. I mean, we try to maximize non-operative management. We try, to, we try every conservative therapy we can prior to uh, discussing surgery. But sometimes, uh, sometimes you gotta go to the OR. So um, the surgery is what is and was a big one. Um, so I, I described the anatomy of, uh, of the knee, uh, and so that's what we have to correct in the surgery. And so what that entails is um, actually moving the bony attachment point. Uh, so this is the tibial tubercle. 
Uh, and so because it's lateralized, it's over here, which is creating a vector in that direction, we have to correct it so that it's, it's, uh, it's uh, lined up appropriately. And so that involves moving the tubercle uh, over in this direction. And so that's a big surgery. Uh, and what we have to do is we, we actually take a saw and we cut the tibia uh, to make a shingle and then you rotate that shingle and then you put two screws through there to secure the shingle until, until the bone heals. Um, and it's a big operation and, and we, we talked at length about that. The other thing that we had to do is we had to reconstruct that ligament that goes from the patella, the kneecap, over to the inside part of the femur. And that ligament acts as a check rein and it keeps the kneecap from sliding off the lateral side or the outside of the knee, which is where they, they typically dislocate. So it's, a, it's two operations in one. We, we move this bony prominence uh, and we reconstruct this ligament. So uh, it's a big operation. Um, he's done just extremely well. Um, about 30 to 50% of the time we go back uh, once the bone is completely united and we take those two screws out uh, and so he's had, uh, he's had that operation just recently and he's just doing wonderfully. Uh, his dream is to go on active duty and, and I think he's going to do great. My son had had the first surgery which was pretty intense and we had, a, we had just gotten home and we were taking shifts at the hospital and started having problems with pharmacies. This one had this, this one didn't. And, um, one pharmacy in particular I had a struggle with and I called his clinical coordinator. I said, I need help. I don't know how to get this resolved. And next thing I knew, the pharmacy calls me and says that my prescription for my son is ready. And it kind of stunned me for a minute because I said, how did that happen? And they said, well, the doctor came down to the pharmacy and took care of the problem. And I, I remember being on the phone specifically and thinking, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I must have said that 10 times because it, it stunned me. He was coming back from surgery and stopped in and took care of the problem. But that, that was just one of many. Um, we had a situation after the first surgery, I remember vividly that um, they're not supposed to be walking for a period of time, no weight bearing. And our son had just gotten up and was moving and fell down some stairs. And I was concerned about the bone being broken because it was high risk. I called his office and said, I, I need Dr. Farrell. I don't know what to do. I don't know, take, do I take him to an emergency room? Because, you know, it, we didn't even know where to begin because he was post-surgical. And he called us. And, and it was, you know, the most incredible part about it was that I remember him saying, you know, don't worry, mom, we'll get him through this. If he broke the leg, we'll get him through this. And for me as a mom, that, that's what I remembered most is the times that he would say, we'll get him through it, whatever it is. And always, always over and above. And I am not an easy mom to please.